uh, test us on is the next generation of people, which is like the, the target audience of the show is. Uh, they also have a, a tester of the perceptive radio at that link where you can uh, listen to how it works and all that. Um, and in the example, it's like a woman stuck in a lift um, and she's talking to the lift about her problems and the lift's like client to her and all that. Uh, but the lift is the computer generated voice. Um, and it talks about like it would be the website takes your location um, and it like changes the script of the of the show depending on where it like changes like it speaks about the local news in your area and what the weather's like in your area. So I feel this could work well with the show. Okay. Um, one of the things Radio 4 Extra does is a 15 minute drama every day. Um, this is similar to what my show, uh, The Perceptive People, is, uh, as it's like 15 minutes. Um, yeah, so this has uh, been very successful. It's been going for quite a few years now. Um, it was previously known as Women's uh, Hour Drama. Um, and it's on like every weekday at 10.45 and 7.45, so like just 15 minutes, and they have different series of shows that they do in this time. Yeah, and then another thing is uh, the Surgery with Allard, which is on a radio, Beauty Radio 1 at night, um, yeah, Sundays, evenings. Um, uh, this show started in 1999 with Sarah Cox, um, and it's had other presenters like Annie Mack, Kelly Osborne, and pe other people like that. Um, and since 2009, it's been presented by uh, Alex Hayden Jones. Um, this show focuses on like adolescent issues, and the listeners interact by sharing their experiences and advice. Um, this is like predominantly a speech-based show. Um, on Radio 1, um, so this kind of shows that speech-based radio does work on Radio 1, whereas it's mainly a music-based uh, station. Um, so this kind of thing kind of uh, backs up that my evidence that this could work. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Is there any questions? And thanks for listening. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tom. Um, has uh, Radio One ever had uh, drama on it before? Uh, not as far as I'm aware. Um, and so, let me get this right. This is a, a 15 minute cliffhanger drama once a week, dropped into Scott Mills' show at 2 p.m. Yeah. Why, why do you think people are listening to, to Radio 1 during the day? Um, probably because it's like on their uh, lunch breaks they're at work or something, or they've got like a day off and they're just listening, doing other stuff like cleaning the house and all that. And what do you think Radio 1's listeners expect to hear when they tune in? Um, usually they expect to hear music and stuff, but um, like as I said with Scott Mills' show, they usually, like when they, he's got like, features like his innuendo bingo, He's, like everyone's like tweeting and saying they're like playing along and stuff, so they're obviously like most people that are listening are like, free that time, like playing along and stuff. So it's obviously that time frame is free for people to listen to. Okay, so you you're going to give them some sort of drama. What sort of storylines? What sort of um, topics will be covered in those dramas? Give me an example. Um, well, it'll be like I said, it'll be a bit like misfits. It's like a group of kids, uh, or like kids, like young adults. Um, and they'll be like in some awkward situation with something like the audience could relate to or something. Um, uh, yeah, and then obviously like something hap will happen and it'll be leave the group uh, with position or something and then the listeners get to choose what they'll do next and there'll be like some set options for them to choose from. So there'll be, what, maybe three options? Yeah, like th two or three options. Okay. Yeah. And so then what will happen? Will listeners tweet using us? Uh, they can like tweet or text and stuff, but the normal ways you can contact radio stations. Okay. And um, um, so what's in it for the, for the listeners? Why why would why would listeners bother to, to interact with? Um because it's like something different, it's something for them to interact with, so they kind of feel like the stories 
their own as they helped uh, change the way it goes and all that. Okay. Uh, the perceptive uh, radio idea, I've, I've, I've seen it in operation, it's really nice. Uh, how far away is that from rolling out? Um, I'm not too sure, but it seems like it's quite far into the development, so it could be very soon. Uh, yeah, as they've had like different dramas that are already based with the perceptive radio. Okay. And how would that, uh, give me an example of how that would fit in with, with your cliffhanger idea. Um, well, basically it just makes it uh, more, like the audience can feel like they're part of it more as it's like, all, like as the perceptive radio will allow it to be like more based in their local area, like with the local news and the weather and stuff. Um, maybe having like one character with the uh, computer generated voice, um, like bringing up like local issues and stuff. Okay, okay. And uh, how many listeners does Scott's Mill Show have on a Wednesday? Um, I wasn't able to find that out as uh, I couldn't get onto the Rajar website that like shows all the different shows and all that. So you need to register with it. Okay. How many listeners does Radio One have? Uh, it's like. Something like 50 million kind of thing it was. 50 million, and that's how many they, they reach in a month, or what's that? I think that was uh, in the last quarter, wasn't it? So in the last quarter, Radio 1 reached 50 million people? Yeah, I think it was about that. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Dylan. That's all right.